Charles's deputy secretary, Dr. John, declared King's hard verdict on Harry. He never called upon his councillors of state. King Charles is thought to have left Buckingham Palace concerned over the decision to keep Prince Harry tied to one important royal role, according to a constitutional expert. The Duke of Sussex, despite no longer being a working royal, still remains one of the King's councillors of state. Charles and his reign have seemingly entered uncharted territory as the monarch continues to retain Harry as his councillor of state, despite evicting him from the UK home. The Duke of Sussex is one of the King's councillors of state, which means that he's one of the few royal family members who can step in to rule if necessary. The position has become challenging since a prerequisite for the royal is to have a UK residence. We really are in uncharted waters here. The Prince Harry situation isn't something the law easily allows for, Dr Craig Prescott, an expert on constitutional law, explained to GB News. The idea of the second son of the king choosing a life away from royal duties isn't something the law has thought about, and I can imagine that Buckingham Palace would be concerned by that. The king had the chance to remove him with the Councillor of State legislation last year, but chose not to. According to the Times, the king's decision had caused a dilemma within the palace walls. By law, those chosen as councillors of state are required to have a UK domicile, but while stepping down from royal duties in 2020, Harry has no home in the UK. Councillors of state are determined in law by the Regency Act. It's not a list that the monarch of their own volition creates. Therefore, to remove Harry can't be done by the king waking up one day and decreeing he be removed. It would require a legislative process to amend the Regency Act itself. To make him ineligible would require changes to the criteria for a COS and lengthy public debate about the process. One of the first things the King did as monarch is hire Dr John Sarabji, a constitutional law professor as a deputy private secretary. He's a legal expert who's previously advised people like the Lord Chief Justice and was put in place to advise the King on the most expedient way legally to deal with issues like councillors of state. So what was the solution? The King added Princess Anne and Prince Edward as lifetime councillors of state. Increasing the pool of available councillors of state ensures that Harry and Andrew will never be called upon. Recently, the King's representative who made this request to the government on his behalf confirmed His Majesty's position. The royal household have confirmed that in practice working members of the royal family, working members, will be called on to act as councillors of state, and diaries will be arranged to make this practical. So Harry and Andrew will never be called upon. There are people who want the king to go full nuclear on Meghan and Harry, strip them of the titles, exclude Harry as a councillor of state, remove him from the succession. And that's not as easy as people think, for reasons Parliament set out. It smacks of taking excessive precautionary measures for something that might not happen, like pulling out all your teeth to avoid toothache. And apart from alienating Harry and Meghan and giving them more reason to complain, it might focus people's attention on the royal family, their role, and why they should continue. The King's solutions are minimal, elegant, and effective. They can keep the titles, a wedding gift, plus we avoid Princess Henry, which would rapidly become Princess Lolo, They've diluted the councillors of state pool, so there's no real likelihood that Harry will need to act, and it's also unlikely that five will succeed him. Instead, the royal family is not doing anything that could be seen as retaliatory, thereby causing complaint.